during this season of Lent, we are meditating on the book of Romans every day. Today the topic focuses on Christ dying for our sins. Christ died for us is a topic given for our today's meditation. In the cross of Christ, God judges sin at the same time shows his saving mercy. That's what we plead in our daily prayer. Show us mercy. All people are sinners and need to be saved from their sin. This is what we read in Romans 1.18, 3.20, chapter 5, verses from 12 to 19. With the coming of Jesus Christ, a new age of redemption, redemptive history has begun. That's what we read in uh, Romans chapter 5, verses from 12 to 19. The atoning death of Jesus Christ is central to God's plan of salvation. Justification is by faith alone. Those who are in Christ Jesus have a sure hope of future glory. So the global message of Romans is that all people everywhere have free access to the riches of God's grace in Christ as they respond in faith to the gospel. So Christ died for us according to the plan of God the Father to make a way for the lost people, whether Jews or Gentiles. According to Romans 5, 12 to 21, Adam brought sin and death into the world. But, but those who have believed in Christ have hope. Christ has reversed the consequences of Adam's sin and has given his own life and righteousness to secure their eternal glory. And according to Romans 1.14, Paul was under an obligation to Jesus Christ who appointed him to be the apostle to the Gentiles, not only the gospel was meant for the Jews, but it was meant for the Gentiles also. That was the reason why Paul was under an obligation to Jesus Christ who appointed him to be the apostle to the Gentiles. This demonstrates God's love towards us. We don't belong to the early Jewish community, but God had mercy towards us. For when we were still without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. This we should always remember. Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. A righteous man will one die. Perhaps for a good man, someone would even dare to die. But our God here demonstrates his own love towards us. In that, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is a central point that we have to see in Romans. While we were yet Sinners, 
Christ died for us. A righteous man can die for somebody, or a good man can die for somebody. But here we, God demonstrate that we are without strength, and we cannot come out of the sin. So Christ died for all, including the sinners. Paul goes on to describe the greatness of God's love. It is love given to the undeserving, to those without strength, to the ungodly, above all, the sinners. So there, there are three things. Undeserving people, ungodly, and above all, the sinners. So now we are, we have to look at the point as to who are those people that Paul refers here in Romans. Paul describes in the book of Romans that we all are those people, including you and me. Paul here says we are the people who are referred in Romans. When he writes to Romans, he not only writes to Romans, he writes to entire community of sinners. So the, it's God's act that at the right time or at the due time, God sent his son to save the ungodly and sinners. As we have seen earlier, sin came into the world even at the creation. When Adam was created, he sinned, and so sin came into the world. But here we see God's act that at the right time, or at the due time, God sent his son to save the ungodly and sinners. Galatians 4.4, 4. if you see Galatians 4.4, 4, when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his son at the right moment in human history. Prepare the people of all nations for Christ and for the proclamation of the gospel. That's what here uh, Paul means in Galatians 4.4. 4. And uh, Christ died for the ungodly Paul here mentioned the idea of a substitution of sacrifice with the word propitiation. Romans 3.25. If you see Romans 3.25, Jesus bled, propitiated or satisfied God's wrath. Jesus' death fully paid for the guilt of sin. Here we see the act of mercy by God the Father. He sent his own son to be the substitute sacrifice or propitiation for the sin we, the human, humans committed or the world community committed. That's what we see in Romans 3.25. In John 11.50, we read, nor do you consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people. That's what happened, that God sent his own son as a sacrifice or a substitute for the mankind. And uh, Galatians 3.13 says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. See, the plan of God in uh, allowing his own son to become a curse 
because we have become a curse of the law. So, Christ, the Son of God, became a curse for us. So, my dear brothers and sisters, we can genuinely say, Jesus died for me. And also we can say, I have no strength to save myself from the slavery of sin. I am ungodly. I am a sinner. So Jesus died to save and transform me. This is what we do whenever we make an intercessory prayer or prayer of confession that we confess that we are sinners. So God in his mercy has come to save mankind, you and me, from the slavery or bondage of sin. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, I said earlier. God's love is a love beyond even the best love among humans. Jesus died for those who were neither righteous nor good. Is there a difference between a righteous man and a good man? The difference in Romans 5-7 seems to be that the righteous man is only that righteous in his personal life. The righteous man is righteous only in his personal life, but perhaps lacking in feeling for others. He will be, he will be called a righteous, but he is personal in his righteousness. The good man, in, con in by contrast, goes beyond the other man by also being kind and benevolent. That is the difference between a righteous man and a good man. But God demonstrates his own love, the work of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary for us in God's ultimate is God's ultimate proof of his love for you and me. This is what we are expected to meditate during these days of Lent. The work of Jesus Christ on the cross. If the cross is the ultimate demonstration of God's love, it is also the ultimate demonstration of man's hatred. It also proves that the height of man's hatred can't defeat the height of God's love. This we see in, every, in our everyday life as we come across people. We see the hatred among people between one another. Finally, the demonstration of God's love isn't displayed so much in that Jesus died for us, but is seen in whom Jesus died. Jesus died for undeserving sinners and rebels against him and ungodly. These are all the acts of Jesus Christ we should remember during this season of Lent. Then only we will realize the, the ultimate super sacrifice that our Lord Jesus Christ made on the cross of Calvary. We should always remember that Jesus died for undeserving sinners and rebels against him, as well as ungodly people. The very point 
all the Christian gospel is, the very point of the Christian gospel is that God's grace is not for a select few. This is the gospel message that we need to take to others, our non-Christian friends. This, uh, this should be our main focus. The very point of the Christian gospel is that God's grace is not for a select few people who call themselves Christians. It's also for others, non-Christians, friends, whom we should have contact with in our everyday life. Otherwise, grace would not be grace. Otherwise, grace will not be grace. Grace is for all, irrespective of whether we are Christians, whether we are followers of Jesus Christ. It is for all, including the sinners. Otherwise, it will not be a grace. The sacrifice Christ has made is available to all, people everywhere in the world. The whole world will one day be cleansed of sin. That's our hope. For that hope only we exist. And injustice and also those who have put their faith in Christ will be restored to the glory of God when Christ comes to save us from the slavery of sin and ultimately to call us to his glory. Shall we look to God in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you, Lord, for the ultimate sacrifice you have made on the cross of Calvary to redeem us from the slavery of sin. Lord, we thank you for keeping us, protecting protecting us not to fall to sin. Lord, as we meditate upon your words every day, Lord, be with us. Teach us, Lord, your grace and mercy so that we may be redeemed people. Help this season of Lent to be of help to rediscover our faith in you. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen.